Hello all, welcome to the Make Your Own Hacker Gadget series at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at how to create an EXT root on the external USB storage. Now keep in mind, this is an absolutely free course from Pentester Academy. And if you'd like the PDF slides, code snippets, etc., please do register at pentesteracademy.com slash yd. This also helps me figure out how many people are really watching this course and acts as a motivation factor. Okay, so in the last video, uh, we basically saw that the embedded device had very less storage on it. Now, on OpenWRT, it is actually possible to have a root FS on external storage, uh, which is typically what we call an EXT root. And OpenWRT really allows you to do it in two ways. Uh, the first of which is actually called a pivot overlay, while the other is called a pivot root. Now you can read all about it in the documentation page. Uh, for our case, we are going to do a pivot root. So let me show you how to do that. Now the first thing of course is to ensure that the USB key itself has been partitioned properly and we have an ext4 file system on it before we can use it with our uh, MR3020. Now you could try and install fdisk on it but I would recommend probably doing this on, you know, any Linux system so that we don't overload uh, the MR3020 with any more libraries. So here is what I've done. I've gone ahead and connected my USB, which I was using with the MR3020 uh, to my Linux machine. And it's basically SDB, that's the device. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say fdisk slash dev slash SDB. I'm going to look at the partition table first. If you notice, there seems to be two partitions. Now, later on, you can play with creating swap space and you know even read documentation about how much swap and all that. Uh, in this demo, I'm just going to have one single partition, which I'm going to use as ext root. So let me go ahead and delete the existing partitions from the USB storage. And this was really created when I was using it with other projects, right? So on fdisk, you can hit an M if you've forgotten the shortcut. D is to delete a partition. So let me put in D, put in partition one to four. Well, we can put in one here, again we want to delete and when we do the partition table, this point you see that both the partitions have been removed. Now let's go ahead and create a partition. You can do this very simply by putting an N. It's a primary one which is the default choice. Uh, default again would be one. Let's go with the entire disk and then what we want to do is also make this bootable. So the option for that is A, let's put in A. First partition, of course. And now we look at the partition table. There's just one SDB1 and that is bootable. Now let's write this. So the partition tables are now written. Now let's go ahead and format this. So let's go back. All of this is also on the slide. So I'd just like to show you uh, the partition, the deleting, the creation of the new partition and writing. And now I'm going to format the file system. So I'm going to use make fs dot ext4 and give it slash dev stb1. So this would take a bit. Now after this, we can plug in the USB key back to the MR3020 and it should be ready for use. 
This is fun, right guys? Definitely leave us some comments on Twitter via security tube in case you're uh, in case you use Twitter. So, I mean, I have two MR3020s, one on which I'm creating all the prints, uh, sorry, I'm creating all the screenshots and, you know, making the slides with. And then I have another one, which I'm going ahead and using to actually make the live videos, just so that I don't have to uninstall and install a hundred times. Okay, perfect. Now let me go ahead and remove the device. And let's go back in here. So I'm going to remove it from my laptop and put it back in to my MR3020. Great. I could do a D message just to check. And there it is. You can see that it's been loaded. Here is the device SDA. Fantastic. Now Let's go back in here and what we are going to do is create an ext root. So let's go through the whole process. It's actually quite simple. Let's create a dir mnt usb. Now after that, let's actually follow along. It's very simple, straightforward set of commands right I'm going to first mount my device which is dev SDA1 right onto the USB directory create now I'm just going to copy those two commands and then I'm going to go back in here and just change this to USB, paste this, there we go. The copying is happening to ext root right now. This should take a bit, but pretty straightforward guys. I mean, if you go through the documentation and have a list of all the commands, um, I think it's fantastically straightforward. I mean, till now have we, really done anything which was so difficult really and that's the best part I mean most of this is actually super simple so you should be almost done and then after this all we have to do is unmount both of them So Lucy is everything you see in the web interface. That's what they call it. Now, even though we are copying pretty much the entire file system to ext root, which is the external USB storage. Uh, now what would happen in case you lose your USB key, right? Or it gets corrupted. Well, don't worry. Even if you remove it, it would still boot from the local root FS, which it has. The only thing would be, of course, that, you know, you would not be able to see any of the packages and all that stuff which you installed later on, on the USB. Okay, so let me unmount both of these. Let me unmount USB as well. This takes a bit. Now, after this, I'm just going to go ahead and modify etc config you can probably make a guess f stab now all we do is now let's go ahead and say that the target is going to be of course the root directory and let's enable it now if you had configured swap as well you could have mentioned the swap device and enabled it also right you can play around with it i leave that as an exercise to you now let me do a quick reboot of the device 
and let's see what happens. Let's give it a bit. So here is my, while this is happening, while the reboot is still happening, here is my MR3020, which I actually use as a device to try out all the demos with. And then I have my actual MR3020. I've opened up the box so that now I have the naked circuit board. It looks pretty interesting. I don't know if the wire is long enough that I can pull it and show you guys in the camera, but I can try. Oh, here it is. See that? <laughs> so one of the things I also want to touch upon is uh, the MR3020, of course, on the board has a serial interface. Unfortunately, there are no pins, etc. And maybe later on in the series, I'll show you how to go ahead and solder uh, you know, pins in there so that you can access the serial interface, uh, do recoveries in case the device gets bricked, uh, and even a lot of other fun stuff, actually. Okay, looks like the device is booted. Let me log back in. You can see all the lights in there. Moment of truth. And there you go, right? If you notice now our root FS basically is having a ton of free space, right? That's fantastic news. Let me log in and we'll verify this using the GUI as well. And there you go, right? 98% space left. Awesome. So now that we have an EXT root which has a ton of space, this gives us possibilities where we can install a lot of software on it. So this is what we'll do in the next couple of videos. And this is all I have for this video. Hope you're enjoying this course. And if you are, tweet to us via Security Tube on Twitter. And please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.